Kia ora koutou. Welcome to HR Chats with me, Teredo, where we talk all things HR and HR related. Today, HR NZ's journey into Te Ao Māori. Uh, who better to talk to than friend and kaimahi of HR NZ, who wanted to support the movement into realising a bicultural nature of New Zealand, and then speci- uh, specifically through HR and HR NZ. Allow me to welcome the wonderful Lorna Goodwin. Kia ora, Lorna. Oh, tēnā koe te reira. Uh, well, kia ora, um, te reira. Uh, tēnā koe te katoa. Uh, ko wai ahau, um, he uri ahau no rongo whakata ki rara tonga. Uh, ko Lorna tōku ingoa, i noho ana ki te whanganui atara i nei a nei. Uh, uh, kei te perangi au ki te haere ki rara tonga. I want to go back home and I want to go waka all day, all night long. So, yeah. Oh. It is, it's one of my favourite places. If you are going back, can I can I tag along? Yeah, hey, look, this is I, I I'm going to start here, Lorna, because we will often see people, uh, and we're going to be talking about this kind of the bigger HR and Z journey into Te Ao Māori, uh, and and the fucker toki that have come from that and various other bits and pieces. Tell me why an introduction is really important. This is a, almost a generic thing when people are turning up to a function to a place. What is the importance within the world of Te Ao Māori of standing up and saying, this is who I am, this is where I'm from? Uh, so for me, it's about connectedness. Um, so we want to be able to connect ourselves to our whānau, to our whenua, um, which is innately um, a part of our identity. We walk around with our, our tipuna on our shoulders, on our backs, um, and we have a responsibility to recognise them. Um, at every 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 stage and every pace um, that we go to. Marvellous. What's your role? You you've come in as as we say uh, uh, to assist with this. What what was the sort of the motivation for that? Um, yeah, I mean, for me, it was really about. Um, I, I'm I'm very privileged to be able to pick and choose who and what I work on. Um, and um, when Nick, the CEO, sort of started to have um, some chats with me around um, the work, the, the transformation work that they were doing with HRN, uh, HRN um, it really, really pricked my ears. Um, so I wanted to get involved to help support that movement towards um, recognising, understanding, um, embracing our biculturalism and recognising that Te Ao Māori, tangata whenua are innately part of what makes us uniquely Aotearoa. When you come into a position like that, where do you start? What was the process? Did, did you come into work that had previously been done and there was a sort of a group of you sat around? And, and I guess whether this parallels to what other organisations do or, or when people go in? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of it's about, it was a bit of a, um, you know, the stars aligned, there's a whole lot of people coming together, you know, there's momentum going forward. And when you can start to feel those sorts of things, um, you bring your unique set of skills into the space. Um, the foundations had already been laid by Carly and Bentham. Uh, they'd, been, they'd been working to change systems for many, many years. It's been a real long game here. Their, through their studies, through their um, influencing organisations, through um, just, you know, their innate Māori-ness. Um, so all I was doing was coming in and helping them to start to realise that through um, either a visual or um, a framework to, to get started. We talked to lots of people. We talked to lots of people. We talked to the alumni, um, the tawera that have come through that um, transforming HRM. We also talked to organisations that are, you know, further along in their journey and um, um, in, in realising um, the uniqueness of Aotearoa, bringing Te Ao Māori lenses to anything and everything that they do. Um, we, <clears throat> we started to really analyse what we were doing at um, HRNZ as well and how are we contributing to that space? Um, and how can we push that even further? So there's no one place to start, um, and it is hard to start. Um, we have this, um, as Kiwis, um, we have this, this feeling that we want to get it right the first time, um, and sometimes we need to just um, figure out where we were 
where we are currently and where we want to get to and figure out a pathway that can actually lead us towards that. I'm just curious, as a little sidetrack, do you think that feeling that we want to get it right creates a fear that we're not going to get it right and that's an impediment to starting, to hopping onto the, onto the, the journey? Yeah, it's a complex, it's, it's a complex area. So, you know, when we bring in our individual context into, um, from a business point of view, our, our individual context, it can make this, the spectrum even look even wider than we, than we want it to. Um, that realisation is a part of that process that, you know, realising where we are and how far we've got to go to realise that biculturalism. Um, or recognising tanata whenua, or recognising our obligations under, under te tiriti, um, can be a bit scary. Um, and I totally get that. But, you know, there's a lot of courage that's needed. There's a lot of manaki that's needed. There's a lot of um, strength required to actually push forward if it's a priority to your organisation. And I would encourage all of our organisations to make this a priority. Absolutely. Look, we very much phrase this at the beginning as saying HRNZ's journey, uh, and we've spoken before around this, it very much is a journey. Before we get into sort of where we are now, what's the importance of understanding that sense that we're not getting on a on a bus at point A and taking that Tao Māori bus to point B and then hopping off and going, we're done, we're sorted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so really thinking, um, you know, that it's not a really a linear journey. This this is a this is an evolving pace. This is an evolving space. Um, depending on where you are, there's no one way to get to that aspirational space of you know realizing your um, te ao Māori, um aspirations. Um, not only for your staff but for your customers. Um, but I suppose the 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 thing is is that. Um, when we can when we can depict a, a linear journey, we feel a hell of a lot more comfortable in actually undertaking that journey because we know that we can see our milestones as we go. A lot of this is in the unknown. A lot of this is in the grey, um, and that's why we need we need um, support. We need manaki. We need um, to affi each other into this space. Um, no one way is the right way to realise those things because it never is, it's never contextualised for your organisation. So, yeah, does that answer your question? Like it's not, yes, it's, it's, not, it's, not a, um, it's not like you're going to get into a cement mixer and just get wheeled around and then spat out and you're, you're the concrete block. It's, you, we have to be very deliberate in where and how we, um, we spend our energy well, what I would encourage is just to start thinking about it differently. Um, we have massive opportunities within HRM, um, human resource management, um, to really influence not only our staff's well-being and um, other, you know, HR-related outcomes, but also our customers. We are a reflection of our customers. So making sure that the way we treat our people in our organisation is reflected to how we treat our, our customers as well. I've got some distance into the conversation before I suddenly thought there may be people who are listening who are saying, I still don't understand what a journey into te ao Māori for a business or, or HR actually means. If you had to kind of sum it up in a pithy couple of sentences, what would you say? I suppose um, for me, this is going to sound pretty crass and I apologise, but it's not about making people Māori there's no way we can do that. It's about recognising, um, appreciating, embracing and allowing Māori to bring themselves to work, um, to bring themselves into spaces. We have innate skills that are just in our blood. Um, and sometimes our processes that are very westernised do not support us, do not... Um, they bring... It's about, I suppose it's about changing the box. So we're not trying to fit into this box that's already been predetermined. We're actually trying to create a new box that actually embraces our uniqueness as Māori. Um, yeah. yeah. It's not, it's, it's an interesting space because I don't think there's any one way 
a te ao Māori process should look. And I think when you have Māori at the helm, we can help define what that looks like in the context that we're actually talking about. Beautiful, which brings us really nicely, I suppose, to the question of how does HRNZ's world look? Where, where have you got to with the work that you have done up until now? We've brought this, this all in, work that's gone before, the, the, the outcomes. Where are you at now? What have you got? So what we do is we work really closely with, um, uh, with um, Carly guiding us and helping us to navigate this space um, to create a framework um, that helps, um, that we think helps uh, guide people into a space where they can start to explore this biculturalism in their own context. Um, and what we did is we used three whakatauke to um, help describe the um, the method or the method that we want that we encourage people to use. Um, we used um, we also had that supported visually, so we needed to be able to tell our story through not only kupu kupu Māori, but also through um, toy Māori as well. So we used um, a beautiful graphic um, designer, Maui Taiwa from um, Tūrangi, um, who helped us to visualise this framework um, that, yeah, hoping to present today. Yeah. Hey, shall we discuss each? When, you, when you're looking for whakatauki, do, are they specifically do you, would you find them you know i've got a, a wonderful book somewhere i'm i'm looking where no one can see uh in my bookshelf uh of 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 proverbs of fakatoki you know like a like one of those kind of strange dictionary of quotations do you go to somewhere like that where do you source them from uh so fakatoki are taonga that are uh, available and you know but the way i um sort of look at it is i really lean on our, um, our elders to help us guide that. So it was really about HRNZ being really clear about what was the aspiration for this framework. What do we want to achieve? We want to achieve change. We want to achieve change for the benefit of Māori, um, for tangata whenua, and using that frame, that frame, that narrative, we were able to pull together some whakatauki that helped tell us that, tell that story. Yeah. Let's look at them. I'm going to use the uh, English translation. Set the overgrown bush alight and the new flax uh, shoots will spring up. Clear the undergrowth so that the new shoots can grow. That's the first one, I think. So um, in Māori, so that's a translation of it in Māori. So tūngia te ururoa kia te pūwhakaritorito te tutu o te harikeke. How we've interpreted that is that it, to affect change, we need to leave some of the ways, of, some of the things that we're doing behind. So that's where the, the poetic nature of um, Reo Māori helps us to tell that bigger, deeper story. So it's not actually about cutting away some black shoots. It's actually about change for no, us. No, I mean, you're not a gardening organisation. It's We're in a world <laughs> of, of, of of metaphor and uh, whatnot. And, and, and it's, it's a really lovely, clear one, isn't it, that actually... There's a whole lot of baggage that we have that we need to we need to burn off and and let go. Is that that's a, so that's where where we're we're starting. Uh, and then we and there anything specific around that one? Yeah, and, and it, it's I think it's really about you know when you've got the harakeke, you can't get rid of everything, or else you've got no longer got the harakeke there. So you have there are some things that are not not useful anymore and those are the things that we need to be really critical about get rid of it um, and start to think differently about how we can nurture that space um, for the benefit of our people and this is really essentially asking those questions what why do we why do we do that you know yeah. why, why you know I, I, I guess in a way it's, it's like one of those odd reviews that people do where you look at all the processes and think oh and no one can remember why something started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when you think about like, a, you know, everyone knows that recruitment is sort of deemed a, a, a hate tower process. Um, 
you know, how can we think differently about that to bring in an element of humari, which is humility? It's very hard for some people to be able to talk about themselves and it's much easier for their nan or their auntie or their mother to come in and actually speak to their skills, their talents. Um, but that, again, is not part of the current process. It may be parts, you know, you know, stitched around in other organisations and maybe offered, but when you think about the box that it's trying to fit in, it's not actually um, widely accepted. Yeah, brilliant. Um, the second of them, weave the people together. Yeah, so whiri atu tangata. So how we saw that one was that, you know, a part of this framework is around embracing uniqueness. So it's not about um, changing a person, it's actually about bringing their individualness or their uniqueness and weaving it into your space. So what are their talents and how can we how can we weave them into a business and how can we it's for the benefit of 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 Aotearoa. So it's it's not necessarily about um, conforming to um, to that box, I suppose, um, but it's about embracing that uniqueness, embracing their um, innate um, difference and um, using those talents for the benefit of Aotearoa. Yep. And we have, um, uh, obviously, as you said, some some beautiful um, artwork that goes along with that. Um, this is is the um, piece of work for uh, We've the People Together. Uh, anything specific about these pieces of work? What's the, what's, the, what's the importance when we're discussing each of these? There's obviously the kind of the, the the deeper significance of it. What's the importance of the artwork when people are looking at that? If they're thinking, is there something within that that can help me to understand or to visualize what exactly is going on? I suppose from um, from Toy Māori and you know our kōrero as well. Um, um, Māori aren't a written. We don't write our stuff down. We use toy. We use kupu. Um, or kōrero to be able to tell that. So our visualisation is also about bringing your own lens to those visuals and how do they apply to your um, your, your circumstances. And so um, the third of our whakatauki, again, um, another beautiful piece of artwork uh, and translation as my strength is not as an individual but as a collective. Yeah, so e hara taku toa, I te toa takatahi, engari he toa takatini. So this is about uniting. So our strength isn't in our individual approaches, but as a collective. So when you think about how um, how we can change, or how we can adapt, or how we can incorporate and embrace more um, more different changes in, in approaches, how can we do that with a collective vision? How can we bring to um, bring forward the 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 need to recognise um, biculturalism, so recognising tangata whenua, and how can we unite that collective vision for the benefit of our HR professionals because they are um, impacting on you know they touch every part of our businesses, um, whether that be directly or indirectly. Um, it's about yeah having that united collective vision. And speaking of United, if we have a look at all three of those pieces of uh, art together, we end up with this um, beautiful image. you want to talk about the three of them together? Yeah, so we called it Fatika. So that, that this, is, this is our framework visualised. Um, and I suppose I want to ask you, Tereira, what do you see when you, when you see that beautiful visual? You know, actually, when I'm looking at it in the centre, I feel as if I feel as if someone's looking quite deeply at me and saying, "Like, well, I see a actually, I see a face uh, within yeah. it." Um, you know, and we're talking about HR. It's a really, it's a really human image. When I when I look at the three, I don't now. I'm going to go back and look at them uh, as separate images. I've got, yeah, isn't yeah, putting them together. Yeah, I I I see. Yeah, I see. I see someone looking at me. I see a lot of different strands that are all coming into that central kind of cortex, almost right here. You know, if I was a, a tuatara, it'd be my that third eye in the middle there. Um, and actually, it, 
you know, I see determination. I see joy. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's quite serendipitous because we, 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 what we did was we created these visuals independent of each other, but bringing them together really brought that human element. And I mean, it's, first of all, it's, you know, to mihi to Maui around his um, beautiful work um, and being able to realize that in a visual sort of sense, but also that we recognize that at the center of this is people, is our people, and we need to be reminded of that either through visuals or the corridor um, as we go uh, go through it. Well, I tell you what, Lauren, you can't look at that and not see people. Uh, isn't it amazing? Again, that serendipity of bringing all of that together. Uh, so once you've got that, where, where, where are we at at this point in time on the long journey for HRNZ? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we want to be able to help other organizations that are thinking about this and we want to share this framework with all our members um, with Aotearoa. Um, we don't see this as a fixed thing, we see this as an evolving piece. We want to be able to um, help people start somewhere. Yeah, it's, I mean, and it really is helping people with a framework for, for their particular journey. So if you were you know, now thinking about people um, out there in the world of, of HR and, and their sort of ecosystem, we should, if they if they haven't really started, what should they be thinking about at this exact moment when they've got this framework and they want to start on their journey? What's the first step? Is it as simple as that? Step one? Do this. Yeah, I don't know if it's a, it's a, if it is a first step. I mean, we've got some suggestions that we can help um start to frame that, that conversation or that narrative that they need to have internally. Um, so the, there's things like thinking about what their current pro, um, human resource processes um, are doing. Analyze them, understand them. Can, you, can we articulate how they're serving Māori or supporting Māori? Um, what does the culture look like in your business? Do we understand if the impacts or the benefits that it has for... Um, for Māori, um, thinking about, you know, we've got a whole lot of um, government organisations, you know, think about Te Tiriti, what are our obligations and how are we tracking to achieve them? So we have um, those that have Te Tiriti obligations, uh, we all have um, responsibilities to make sure and accountabilities that we need to make sure that we're achieving those things. I mean, essentially, if you just employ more Māori, more Pacific people, more Indigenous people, um, you will see, and, and being really deliberate about that, um, you'll see how their innate skills are actually contributing to not only um, your business, but you know the wider communities. Um, think about um, you know, celebrating your successes, however small they are or however big they are, um, they're all a step towards achieving their aspiration, however you want to define it. Um, and I suppose the other thing, Tereda, is, you know, be kind, be kind to yourself. Um, nobody expects us to be, um, to achieve um, a space that's, um, you know, right and safe for, for Māori to be in, 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 or in any facet of your business. But effectively, be kind and just be able to... Um, Keep and going. I, and, I guess, Keep going. Yeah, and, I, and I think that it was really important that celebrating success. And then I'm going to go back to that first fuckatoki, you know, and the importance of listening. Sometimes we, you know, we've planted something and we think this is awesome. This is great. Look at it. It's and then someone comes in and says, I'm not sure that's in the right place. Or, you know, and that importance of then being able to 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 reassess and to to let go to burn some of that process or that you've created. Yeah because it isn't right. And that's, that can be where the hard part comes, eh? That listening and being, and because there can be a lot of different voices and, and thinking, you know what, we gave it, we, we, we did something and, and maybe we, we inadvertently didn't do it the way we should. Yeah, and I think I suppose that's all part of that journey, eh? You know, being able to sit, put your hand up and say, oh, how, um, yeah, we may not have got this right, but we're doing something about this. First step is actually recognizing that we haven't actually maybe achieved what we wanted to achieve with whatever we were doing. 
Um, and I think that there's a lot of mana in there. You know, but we, you, you can't, you know, we can't, we can't be perfect all the time. Yeah. But having the um, the humility and the, the 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 strength and courage to be able to say we haven't got this right, we want to do something about it. You know, when we're thinking of celebrating those successes, how about the things that that go awry? Is is there something that maybe commonly goes wrong, or was there something that went wrong in this particular process that hadn't gone wrong before? Yeah. Um, and actually, here's a question: Lorna. Is wrong the wrong word? Am I bringing yeah. a very English word to something? Is there a better word? Yeah, I suppose for me, there's there's no one way to achieve this. Um, you know, I'd like to say, um, well, some of the things that I've observed in the, in the very short time that I've been involved in the space, but it'd probably be better to come from Carly, um, is that, you know, when we don't have Māori in at leadership spaces, we, we don't have that lens at the table. Um, so, one thing I would encourage is to have more Māori um, sitting where decision makers are making decisions, whether that be um, through deliberate recruitment or um, creating pathways for Māori to achieve that in their own terms. Um, I'm not going to say that that's the wrong thing. Well, that's the right thing, sorry. But the wrong thing that I'm seeing is that um, Māori aren't necessarily um, nurtured into that space of leadership. They don't see themselves um, in those leadership positions. So we don't know that that's a space for us or a safe space for us to actually operate. Um, it's growing and it's awesome to see the amazing Māori that are out there, you know, doing the leadership, um, doing the governance, um, actually really making some impactful change for Māori. But we need more of it. We want more of it. Um, what I would say was doing wrong. Oh. Yeah, I think you're right, mate. I, th I don't think it is wrong. I think it's, um, it's got to be a better word. We need a better word. We need a different yeah. clue, yeah. Because I, I know, having spoken to, to Carly and others, again, that one of those difficulties is, is going, oh, well, we've got Brian and Brian's Māori. And so we're just going to ask Brian and, and putting all of this, 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 this pressure onto onto individuals who may not necessarily want that role, or they're just trying to get their jobs done as well. That you know, so that importance of of being really aware of of how much responsibility you may be even um, uh, inadvertently placing on people. Yeah, and I mean that all that seems to happen um, far too often, um, where. Oh, this is going to sound terrible, but you know, it's almost like dial a Māori, you know, like, oh, we want to do a karakia, but we don't actually know why we want to do a karakia. Um, we don't want to, we want to have a mihi and I want a pepeha, but I don't understand the reasons why we, um, why that's innately um, a Māori thing to do and how it's actually applied to our, our non Māori or our Tawiwi colleagues. Um, we want to connect with other cultures. It's not just slapping a pepeha or a mihi um, ingoa on it, and it's it's yeah. more about understanding the why behind it. Um, why is it important for us to connect? Why is relationships, um, <clears throat> why are relationships um, a part of business? Um, a, a part of you know not just around sell, selling you something. It's actually about we want to be a part. We want to be in partnership. Yeah, it's actually a really good. Place for people to begin, isn't it? Before you get into the how and the what, the why is is probably one of the most important of all of the questions. Why do we? Why are we doing this? What does this mean? Or oh, I suppose that's a what question. Um, it's part of the bigger why. Uh, before people launch into the into the journey. Hey, look, um, running out of time. What's been the best thing? for this particular process. You must see a lot of processes. We talked earlier on about celebrating success. If someone said to you, what's the, what's the success, big or small, that you would celebrate out of this a relationship with, with HR and Z, what would you say? Um, the thing I love about um, this, this particular framework is that it's designed by Māori, with Māori. Um, it's... Um, 
It's also been really well supported by our non-Māori colleagues, so um, our alumni, our tawira, our, um, our mates out there that get it already and, are, and really need the, um, need the support to get that momentum, that momentum forward. Um, for me, um, it's been, I'm a very visual person, Derrida, so um, when we could realise um, our kupu with our toy Māori, um, it really just started to make sense for me that, um, yeah, there's no one way, there's no one pathway, um, there's no strate one strategic direction that we need to undertake here. We, we as a collective can define that. Um, and we as a collective can actually influence and support others along their journey as well. So um, I'm excited um, that we can create that groundswell, that groundswell of change, that we can support each other to, <clears throat> to recognise and to um, bring more um, te ao Māori into our everyday working sort of space. What's the ultimate goal, Lorna? I guess is a it's is there an is there an ultimate goal? Yeah, one hundred percent there is. You know, we want to achieve. Um, we we want we want more equitable outcomes for Māori in the workplace. We want more. Um, we want more more Māori and higher value jobs. Um, you know. Currently, Māori are facing a, a discriminations and injustices within the systems that just continue to perpetuate inequality for them. Um, and it extends across, you know, the realm of business, um, every facet, you know, from, you know, REM, um, working conditions, cultural tax. Um, we talked about that earlier, you know, being, you know, go and get Brian, who's in accounts to do all this other stuff that's, you know, but just because he's Māori. Um, we don't, we want better outcomes for Māori in the workplace. We want them to be able to shine. We want them to be able to bring their um, their full, full selves to work every day for the, for, the, for the betterment of themselves. But when we think about it from a Māori lens, it's always for the betterment of our community, our whānau, um, our hapū, our iwi. Um, we want employers to see these inequities faced by Māori, by tangata whenua, and be active in the change. We want them to be, um, not to, well, we do want them to see if, if they're contributing to, to that inequality um, or the, the inequity, but we also want them to actually do the, the changing part as well. Yeah. We want more we Māori. HR profession. We need more Māori as HR facilitators. We need HR leaders. We need more Māori in that space. And we want them to be influencing the strategic direction of the business, the people. We want our profession to be stronger in, in cultural capability. So we want we want biculturalism, I suppose. We want it's very, um, it's very aspirational, Lorna, isn't it? You know? Yeah, but it's not unattainable. To radar. So they, they, you know, all these small changes can they contribute to that bigger outcome that we're looking for. Brilliant. If anyone wants to start making some small changes or find out more about it, uh, where's the best place for them to go? Well, HRNZ have some really awesome things going on currently. So, you know, the Transforming HRM in Aotearoa course, I think there's dates coming up. Um, I'd encourage people to sort of um, participate in that space. They're always um, well sought after. Um, Carly and Bentham um, and Kurotimi are amazing facilitators and they will uffy and manaki you into a space. Plus you get to join the alumni of Tawira that have gone before you. So that there's, you know, we're creating that network, that tour can attain a network to be able to support more um, significant change. I know that there is also um, a Ropu Māori within um, within HRNZ um, that is actually helping um, create that space for Māori to um, influence and um, create that network to support our other, um, other members um, through the space.
Brilliant. Hey, look, I know I am a um, better off for our conversation. Uh, and I'm sure there are people out there who, as soon as they finish listening to this, are going to be straight onto the website. Lorna Goodwin, thank you very much. What a wonderful cordero. Uh, and um, let's, I'm going to celebrate the success of all of the wonderful work that has gone before and look forward to seeing um, what it is that HR professionals and associated people can take away from it when they pop onto the website and see. Much appreciated, Lorna. Kia ora to Raider. As always, if there is something in the HR world that you would like us to talk about, have a chat to HRNZ and we'll see what we can rustle up on another HR chat with me to radar form from me for now. Goodbye.